Bob Iger is pushing back on the idea that there's superhero fatigue. I'm wildly disappointed because I love the idea of four women leading a superhero film. Say MCU all you want, I don't give a shit. I hate the MCU slogan. I hate it. Now, I'm sure you've heard the term MCU. It's being used by some fan communities. And yes, the term is extremely offensive, but it's also becoming undeniably true. Everything they're working on is terrible. The executive noted that they're doing a lot and even quietly canceled certain projects. Added, not only do you look at the films you're making, you look at every part of that process. Who the directors are, who's being cast, reading scripts. I personally watch films three to five times with the team and just create a culture of excellence and respect, which is really important with the creative community. <laughs> actually did it. I don't want to say that this is a win for the fans because with a Hail Mary pass such as this, there was bound to be some heavy mixed reactions. Of course, you have the side of the audience that genuinely did like the new direction Marvel had taken with the MCU post Endgame, so it's unlucky to see some of those characters go, including myself who would hate to see characters like Moon Knight or God Loki hit the chopping block, all because of the downfall of the entire saga. You have the side of the fandom that looks at this as a genuine win for the fans, a move that while desperate or not, pretty much confirms to that side of the audience that their old strategy of the quote unquote MCU did not work out and are just happy to see it fail with thunderous applause. You have the casual side of the audience that has just been stricken and jaded over the years to a point where they're just overflowing with fan apathy, and of course, the Marvel fanboys who just believe the MCU is back every time after dining out at a cheesecake factory then having to go back to their Arby's for the rest of the week. What a nightmare. And I imagine that's how it's felt for Kevin Feige and the MCU overall as they've watched themselves slowly but surely run their brand into the sunken place in an industry where they pretty much were seen as God in a franchise that could do no wrong. Sure, as I mentioned before, there were some bright spots along the journey such as the Loki series, Spider-Man No Way Home, Shang-Chi, the conclusion to the Guardians trilogy, and even X-Men 97 are all installments into a franchise that I think will hold their own even to the highest of highs in the Infinity Saga. But unfortunately, for even our highest of highs, there's kind of no denying from a financial aspect the optics surrounding the brand, and most importantly, the fan-to-studio relationship hit its lowest of lows in the multiverse saga, generating numbers and ratings that were simply unheard of when it came to its sister saga. From movies like Thor Love and Thunder, The Marvels, and Ant-Man Quantum Dumbass that found their way into entering new territories of brain rot and decision making that I truly believe left most audiences gaped at the mouth from a lack of fucking brain cells, to what I now believe to be, with hindsight, the biggest risk and failure of the MCU. Their Disney Plus shows, shows that ranged from a varying degree of quality and ratings, but an idea that never really seemed to catch the traction that Marvel was looking for. From projects like Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, or the Loki series that had the quality, but not the audience, to shows like Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Echo, or Hawkeye that just wasn't all that in a bag of chips, or to the shows like She-Hulk or Secret Invasion that only added fuel to the flame that was the burning fan apathy of Marvel's casual audience. So what does all of this mean in regards to the casting choice of RDJ as Doctor Doom in the new Avengers movie? As I mentioned before, there was bound to be mixed audience reactions to an announcement as grand as this. Marvel knew that. What I'm saying is that as a rational audience member that understands and has been living through the context and situation that Marvel finds themselves in, it's not hard to see how this could be a logical solution Kevin Feige and company would come to. And while yes, obviously, I believe that the increased amount of unqualified bullshit hitting our screens during Marvel's phases 4 and 5 was the main contributing factor that backs a monumental decision such as this, I do believe that Jonathan Majors and his off-the-field antics and optics also had a part to play as well. Sure, while what happened legally is a situation that is unpredictable and I know far too little to actually have an opinion on the matter, but nevertheless, 
it was a risk that was not rewarded on a business side of Marvel and the landscape of their future projects. There's no denying that Jonathan Majors is a good actor and his portrayal as Kang, rather the writing was up to par or not, was pretty fantastic. He had the on-screen presence in a big enough basket that Marvel felt as if they could dump all of their eggs into. And while I don't believe the trajectory of MCU hype was going to make his potential Avengers movie as big as the hype surrounding Robert Downey Jr.'s Doctor Doom, it was still a vision that fans were willing to see play out, including myself. But when you go all in on an actor character portrayal and that decision ends up biting you in the ass, as well as continuing to receive consistent pressure from the fans that your quality of content isn't up to par, it's kind of understandable that an overcorrection would be the next course of action. The whole point of all of this is that Marvel, and frankly us the audience, are tired of playing small ball. We've completed, witnessed, and achieved the greatest cinematic event of all time, so there were risks that were allotted to be taken. All of it makes sense. But unfortunately, what at the time was probably not even considered to be a high risk, considering the empire that the MCU was, it didn't pay off. And I'm not of the mindset that Marvel should just continue to stay on the same path of lackluster, high risk, low reward, and in some cases, laughable shit on a screen. As a fan, audience member, and paying customer, I want the MCU to be good. There is a phrase that a rising tide lifts all boats. And when the MCU was on top of the Hollywood pyramid, everyone underneath, from studios to different IPs to different genres to the actors, also got their split of the pie. That is just what happens when everyone is going to the movies again. The theater experience is slowly but surely dying out in our society, and at a time where the MCU's audience to studio relationship is at an all-time low, and the status of their fan apathy was at an all-time low before the release of Deadpool and Wolverine, I definitely see the vision of this casting choice, and honestly, I can't wait to see how all of this negative reaction just goes away once that first trailer breaks the internet. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'll leave a link to my Twitter and letterbox in the description below, just in case you guys want to go check that out. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.